Medical information obtained from our website or on the live show is not intended to be a substitute for professional care. If you have, or you suspect you might, have an illness or other medical condition, you should consult a health care provider. The opinions expressed on this radio program are not necessarily those of the sports doctor, this radio show, or their sponsors. Hey, everybody. Welcome live from Chicago. It's the sports doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Wild, sports podiatrist. All things sports, medicine, fitness, and wellness brought to you by Global Schoolwear, school uniforms by Tommy Hilfiger, Lower Extremity Review, and MVP Parent Magazines, UK Health Radio. we got a great doubleheader. Dr. Brian Cole, he's the team orthopedic surgeon for the Chicago Bulls and the Chicago White Sox. He's the host of the popular Sports Medicine Weekly. He returns along with Joel Franco, the co-founder of Chesapeake Films, the creator, producer of the upcoming documentary, been involved with him for years with this already, Where Our Children Play, the Challenge of Youth Sports. Dr. Brian Cole, welcome back to the Sports Doctor. It's great to be on. Thank you for having me. Yes, you know, we have to say hi to Steve Cashel, <laughs> your partner for how many years on the on your uh, sports medicine show? Well, Steve and I did the uh, ESPN Sports Medicine Weekly for nearly 10 years, so he was an amazing yeah. partner. I, yes, he really, really is. So we're giving him a quick shout-out. Dr. I Brian, will. give us some, some background on yourself and the world of uh, being a uh, team physician in the pro world of both baseball and basketball. Well, I, I mean, I think, so I'm an, you know, I'm an orthopedic surgeon, and uh, I'm in Chicago at Rush University Medical Center, so I'm with Midwest Orthopedics at Rush, and I've been in practice now uh, for about 25-plus years. And my area of uh, interest and expertise is uh, sports medicine, uh, shoulder, elbow, and knee primarily, and then having an, an additional interest in cartilage transplantation and uh, reconstruction of, of the knee and other joints, including the elbow. But, um, you know, understand that uh, because we manage professional athletes, that doesn't mean that uh, the bulk of our practice are people like you and me, and I know you're very, very active, as am I, and the majority of my patients are not professional athletes, uh, but rather everyday people who just wish to remain active. You know, so, forever. You know, I got to mention, uh, you know, uh, Noah Perlis, uh, who's been, been helping me on the radio a couple of years. He's very involved in the world of the baseball blue book, which we're going to talk about. He just competed in Louisville in the National Masters. He got a silver medal in the 200 meters. He's 75 years old. And he medaled in a couple of different relays. So, yes, we're all, we're all hoping to uh, keep rock and rolling through that period of time. You know, the pressure of uh, professional sports with the millions and millions of dollars. Dr. Cole, can I play yesterday, uh, dealing with the coaches and uh, other doctors. That's got to be a real challenge. You know, I think it's all kind of how you position it uh, mentally. <clears throat> I think that one of the things that I've learned is that athletes actually uh, really appreciate being treated like regular patients with, you know, while the decision-making uh, is more complex, you can take the same uh, specific problem yet make a different decision depending upon where an athlete is in his or her season and um, roster changes and contract issues, whether they're long or short money. And yeah, all of those things factor in, but really what's um, prioritized is the fact that these are just individuals who have the same kinds of problems that you and I get. Uh, but at the same time, there has to be sensitivity to how they function within the system that they, that they live. And that means that they have uh, an obligation to a team, to their their coaches, coaching staff. Maybe it's a, an athletic director. It can be their family, and it can be their agent, and a lot of people who love to whisper in their ears. And um, so the, the the scope of the system they're in actually has dramatic impact potentially. But in, in the end of the day, these are individuals where we still make the same decisions that are, you know, for the health and well-being, not just for the near term to alleviate pain and improve function, but hopefully decisions are made for the long term whenever possible. And as I said, you can sometimes make very different decisions for the same problem based upon an individual's timeline in terms of their desire to get back to sport and how long they actually need to stay back at their sport. You know, uh, sometimes I ask all the time, you know, in the world of youth sports, the tremendous big business that it is, and the pressures with overzealous parents and coaches and 
sometimes I wonder where, you know, the families, uh, uh, which has got more pressure, you know, when you're dealing with some of these young athletes uh, and, you know, scholarships on the line, the careers on the line earlier and earlier, all of these different pressures uh, uh, has to be the same kind of a tinderbox many times. And uh, you can't get away from the good old TLC, uh, like you talked about right off the bat, uh, you know, being able to deal with individuals and their families and, and their priorities. Everybody listening to the Sports Doctor, I'm Dr. Bob Wild, sports podiatrist. If you go to my website, sportsdoctorradio.com, you can go back years uh, with uh, international, national, local guests, all sorts of different topics, listen to whatever you would like. We have all sorts of thousands of followers in both uh, Twitter as well as LinkedIn. I can't tell you how many guests over the years I've gotten from those platforms. And we have a lot of great sports medicine information that we share, a lot of excitement with MVP Parent Magazine and some of these different articles. If you go to uh, at Sports Doc, D-O-C Radio, you catch us on Twitter. We're talking with Team Doc, Chicago White Sox, Chicago Bulls, uh, Dr. Brian Cole. Tell us, Dr. Cole, about your popular a weekly a sports medicine weekly podcast. You know, 12 years ago, I was sitting with Steve Cashel, who was the voice of the Bulls for for a long time. Uh, we were in the locker room, and I was just talking about research and publications. And I just released a textbook at the time, and um, and uh, I was saying, you know, it's it's pretty awesome to have an impact on uh, young people and to mentor people and to teach as well as to work with your colleagues. And, you know, one of the greatest parts about my job is I feel like I'm always learning and also provided the privilege to share knowledge. And I said, but the one thing it's missing and is while seeing patients is probably one of my greatest pleasures, you're only really seeing someone one, one patient at a, you're only dealing with one patient at a time. And a big part of my practice paradigm is really education. Mostly what I do is teach patients about their issues I sort of feel like I'm a waiter sometimes, you know, where you're saying, like, here's the menu. Uh, I don't know how hungry, hungry you are, but based upon how hungry you are and what your tastes are, these are all the things we have, and I'm going to explain how you'll, what you'll appreciate or feel with each of these, and then you're going to make the decision on what to do. And if you take that approach in terms of consensual decision-making where it's a partnership, office visits are often much more lengthy. They require a lot more patience in terms of teaching, education, providing collateral material. And I really feel like we've developed this um, armamentarium of very useful information that people sort of need to know, but they can't get it in a logical format. The Internet is sort of a mile wide and an inch thick. And I felt that doing a sports medicine radio show, much like you do, uh, we started on ESPN and then transferred to a podcast just because it seemed a little more nimble and easier to manage, was a way to reach more people with the same messaging. So start out with very common topics, you know, much like you, you know, youth baseball, the parent, you know, child relationship, psychology and sports, uh, supplements. Uh, we've done orthotics. We've done cartilage transplantation. We've talked to uh, various professional athletes throughout the years. And, you know, there's a lot of variety in topics and things that I just feel comfortable talking about. And then, you know, like you, I have a, a pretty wonderful research team that can help me put together, you know, things that are synthesized that are sort of patient-friendly, forward-facing, that can be meaningful, because there's a lot of content out there, but I think some of it's just not delivered in an efficient way, and frankly, some of it's not validated, and um, I think there's a lot of misperception. You know, what's the best site people could find out about the show and everything else you do? Well, I, you know, I'll, there's two places. One is uh, my personal website, just because there's a litany of material there, Brian Cole, MD. Dot com and then sportsmedicineweekly.com holds all of our former podcasts and current podcasts and shows. And, you know, I've been to your site as well. I mean, it's it's awesome to have that library. I've had patients reach out to me. One recently, this woman from Poland was reaching, was visiting. She's a doctor of physical therapy. She spent a week with us. And she says it's a lot of patients from Warsaw who are athletes. And uh, she says, I listen to every one of your podcasts. You need to get on it. And, you know, these are, I think the, the public doesn't understand how, how, how much time and effort uh, these you know, producing these podcasts are, you know, it's maybe easier than it used to be in the days of radio where you have to go into a studio. You and I are in different places. Obviously, that's a lot easier, but there still is a lot of thought production time. And, you know, I listen to you and I know you are always well prepared for your episodes. And that does. Take oh, yeah, I don't want to age myself or anything, but I'm pushing a thousand guests with maybe four decades. It would take a, yeah. a, a few weeks. And, you know, it's interesting how the whole world of sports medicine, Dr. Brian, has exploded in so many ways. Again, whether it's the professional, the serious young athlete world, the idea of sports nutrition becoming such a big deal. 
regenerative medicine that you mentioned right off the top uh, with the uh, whole idea of um, uh, supplementation as well as different kinds of um, uh, stem cell, all of these types of things that, you know, nobody knew how to spell it 20, 25 years ago. And one of the most hot topics forever on the sports doctor, you talk about it a lot. I call it the mental game. Whether you're the best athlete in the world, whether you're their parents, whether you're their coach, whether you're dealing at all of these different levels, uh, whether you're trying to stick with your exercise program or your, your eating, your diet scenario, so much of it is mental. That's grown, you know, the late white, you know, the great White Sox ball player, the first White Sox player ever put orthotics in his cleats, Eric Soderholm, had a sports hypnotist. This is the late 70s, early 80s. And the White Sox thought he was out of his mind. You know, what kind of voodoo, uh, the mental game, the sports psychology is a big, big deal in all aspects, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's come to the point now, actually, where uh, virtually every major professional organization requires that we have a performance psychologist or someone in the uh, mental health space. Uh, it could be a social worker, it could be a sports psychologist, it could be a full, full-on uh, psychologist that deals with issues exactly like this. And, uh, you know, every organization that I deal with, uh, from the Chicago Red Stars, the, the, the independent baseball, the dogs, uh, the White Sox, and the Bulls invest in uh, experts in this area. And there's not enough of them, quite frankly, especially now. You know, this goes drills down not just performance, but all the way down to just basic mental health issues, which, you it's know, not, only you know, there's the not last a bigger topic years. with the yeah. pandemic. At the, well, when I have guests, yeah. only, wherever they're from, wherever they're vacation, they took mental energy. You know, we're all excited. 1909, Baseball Blue Book was invented. The one place, one stop all coaches, parents, baseball players, recruiters, schools, colleges. Uh, Eric Wabini, who's now the CEO of um has been a guest of mine with baseball blue book and we're all excited uh you and i are, are involved in the the new sports medicine uh board of advisors that's going to include this whole topic in the world of youth baseball um talk a little bit about your thoughts uh with the that whole baseball blue book opportunity you know, I think it's a little like the information that you and I have access to and what the public has access to. There's really no consolidated place for people to go. And, you know, baseball, you know, you know, the, 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 the world's most favorite, the world's most popular and favorite sport, uh, uh, certainly in the United States, um, uh, but also other countries, um, has just it, it, the breadth of reach when you when you go from youth, uh, starting with Little League all the way up to adults and independent baseball and so forth. The, the sheer volume and reach is enormous, and there's really no singular place to go. And then you're doing, for you're all right, they're doing, doing Tommy John surgery, Tommy John surgery on 14 year olds. The yeah, overuse. Yeah. It's why I co authored the book, Hashtag Hey Sports Parents, the epidemic of youth sports overuse injuries, both physically and, and mentally. You know, down south, climate, year round baseball, 12 years old, 13 years old, too much, too much, too much. And we want to get in the middle of all of this whether your son is the best player in the country or whether you're trying to come up with safety to prevent injuries, enhance performance, and uh, all these things that uh, you've been doing forever. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, I think now it's just in the public domain. So the reason I love this Blue Book concept is that it's an old concept that's sort of being reinvented that can be much more inclusive now just given the size of the Oh, they're going digital. You know, they're yeah, going big the time with an digital, app. Right. You know, right. Uh, and as you know, I've had experts in the world of youth sports internationally for, for decades. Uh, and so many of these areas, the National Alliance of Youth Sports just celebrated their 40th anniversary uh, with education for coaches and iSport 360 with the communication of coaches and parents. Uh, and and uh, this is why we're all excited about this documentary coming up over the next few months uh, where our children play the challenge of youth sports. Um, every, you know, uh, the Little League World Series is a two week bonanza on ESPN, right? <laughs> Who would have thought? Yep. Who would have thought? I knew yeah. the time would fly by with that. And again, we're going to have Brian back as we really, really get rolling. Baseball Blue Book. Again, Brian, quickly, best site for people to find out about uh, Sports Medicine Weekly. 
sportsmedicineweekly.com. Uh, very easy. Also, our podcast or where everyone, where everyone normally tunes into their podcast, uh, and, uh, in, including Apple. And um, we are also at BrianColeMD.com. So uh, feel free to reach out directly if anyone has any questions. Or, I can't uh, tell you how many friends and athletes that Dr. Brian has helped. And next time we have him on, we're really going to talk about regenerative medicine. Thanks, Dr. Brian Cole, man. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. Everybody, it's Dr. Bob Weil, a sports doctor. I'm excited to announce the release of my new book, co-written with Sharky Zartman, hashtag Hey Sports Parents, an essential guide for any parent with a child in sports. You know, Sharky is a former Hall of Fame volleyball player. She's the mom of two daughters who became Division I volleyball players. Together, we have over 70 years of combined youth sports experience. The goal of the book give you the essential tools and guidance to make your experience as a sports parent the best it could be. Hashtag Hey Sports Parents is divided into four sections. The first section, Sports Parenting 101. Sharky talks everything about uh, parenting, about coaching, that whole uh, interaction between parents and coaches, coaching your own kid. Uh, what's the, what are the things to really pay attention to? The second section is the Sports Doctors In, yours truly. Uh, my discussion of injury prevention and treatment, choosing the best shoes, youth sports and drugs, essential exercises, the dilemma of youth football, orthotics. Third section, uh, experts speak out. We bring together eight different experts in nutrition and sports performance and mental training in all aspects of coaching in that section. The last section is the parent's perspective, some insights from about a half a dozen parents of athletes. So everyone, hey, get out your megaphone, spread the word. Now available on Amazon. Order now. You'll be more confident. So will your young athlete. Hashtag, hey, sports parents. We're back with the sports doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Wild, sports podiatrist, and we're welcoming back Joel Franco uh, and uh, Keeping Progress. He is the co-founder of Chesapeake Films, and he's the creator, director, producer of the exciting upcoming documentary, uh, Where Our Children Play, The Challenge of Youth Sports. We're checking that progress. We've been so involved with him all the time. Joel, welcome back to the sports doctor. Thanks for having me back. So good to be back. Give us a little bit of quickie background on you and this launching of this documentary, the idea and um, uh, the excitement about everything that's involved with it. Yeah, um, thank you. Um, we, our, I started the, the process really with a question from my son asking me to coach him. And once he... I got involved with his team way back, I don't know, four or five years ago by now. Yeah, hey, sports um, parent. <laughs> I know. you got to love being a sport parent, right? Yeah, uh, I hate it, really. <laughs> it's like Cherish the best and the worst at friend. the same time. <laughs> Cherish those years, my friend. Once they're gone, they're gone. I'm doing my best right now. So, But if that's really what it started. It's all his fault. So if uh, I'm just going to blame him. Um, because once he asked me to coach him, and I got involved in, uh, you know, with his team and other parents and youth sports in general. And it was all she wrote after that because I, once I started seeing the, the, the situation and where we are, 
what the system is looking like for kids, I just couldn't keep quiet. And I figured that the best way for me to do something about it was to make a movie and tell the story. You know, a great part of the story, of course, is when I first had you on the radio at the beginning of a lot of this project X amount of years ago, and you said, hey, Doc, you know, this youth baseball is like a $14 billion a year business. <laughs> Talking about all the particulars, a year later on the radio, you said, you know, hey, this youth ba- uh, uh, sports, man, this thing is a $15, $16, 17000000000 billion a year business. The last time I had you on, you said, hey, Doc, this $20 billion a year. So by the time we get to this thing airing, who knows how much is it's going to be? And uh, you know everybody is familiar. They picture the overzealous, ranting, raving parent, uh, the problems with uh, refereeing and umpiring, and those kinds of pressures, and uh, all of these things that a lot of us are familiar with, who have, who have had kids who have played sports. And we also wanted to emphasize what I've been talking about for 20 years, give or take a few weeks. There's a lot of positive things going on, and we need to concentrate on them. And you hit it in the beginning when you talked about we got to emphasize the kids. And we have to pay a lot more attention to what they think and these kinds of situations and attack some of these concerns. And uh, the, inven- the adventure continues, right, for you? <laughs> it never ends, but that's exactly right. That's the whole point of our movie is to bring the focus back on the kids, to focus on the kids, and to finally uh, address the listening part to the kids. Because so many times we, either parents or coaches or adults in general, choose not to hear what the uh, kids are know, saying. My, my late great sports psychology colleague who shared the radio with me in the 90s, probably for five, six years, trainer of champions. He worked with Northwestern University. He worked with prisons. He worked with the White Sox. And here were some of his pearls for sports parents when I would drag them along with my son's Little League or the soccer team. I would be talking about what's the best shoe and do you need ice? And he would talk about behavior and he would say number one pearl for parents was don't be a critic. Don't oh, analyze my God, yes. your son or daughter's activity on the way home in the car. And number two, two A, be a good listener. In the, the epidemic of sports overuse injuries in youth sports, which we pay so much attention to, and we pay big attention to it in the documentary, uh, is another area where, again, the communication with kids Parents even finding out, hey, listen, you, you know, your ankles are still hurting you. You're taking medicine every day and all of these kinds of pressures. Um, so many different areas. And you've brought together all sorts of different expertise with lots of opinions, haven't you? Yes, because that's the only way that uh, we can all help each other is by listening to each other's uh, thoughts and ideas on how to make things better. And if we follow the lead of children, that's all we really need. I think it's since, you know, a couple of weeks I have Reed, Reed uh, Maltby on, one of the contributors. You know, Reed has been a champion in the world of youth sports. He's got a new book uh, uh, coming out. And, uh, uh, you know, again, we're contributing uh, the, the uh, a coach's perspective. Uh, and uh, he's had a lot of great ideas that you incorporated, hasn't he? Yeah. Yes, for sure. Uh, especially about uh, how to communicate what words to use, how to really understand where each child, and depending on age, they are at. So that you can, uh, you know, because some kids come from a, you know, they, they've been playing for years, some kids haven't. So you just have to work with them wherever they are at, not where you think they should be. And that's yeah, something you know, that if more coaches would do that, more parents would do that, we'd have a lot more happy kids. Yes, and what's interesting, you know, the famous Little League, um, and I, I was all excited. My hometown was in the Little League World Series last year, massive people, Long Island. <laughs> you know, it's on ESPN for like two solid weeks. People discuss a lot of times, is this kind of crazy pressure? Little League woke up 20 years ago, Joe, and they realized that 30% or more of the kids who played the year before didn't want to play anymore. They didn't want to be part of this winning, yelling, ranting, and raving atmosphere in too many situations, and I think they woke up big time. 
uh, with the importance, again, of um, uh, allowing the, these kids to continue to have fun. After all, youth sports is supposed to be about having fun. And I think, you know, we stress, and you stress that uh, an awful lot, uh, but at the same time, when we're dealing with coaches and you're dealing with um, some of these different pressures with scholarships and um, too much specialization, we then run into these physical and mental overuse problems, which can become uh, a, such a nightmare for so many uh, uh, different parents. And uh, how are you doing as a soccer coach, by the way? You're learning along the way with the documentary, Joel. <laughs> I absolutely am learning. Are you kidding me? It's like the biggest <laughs> learning experience ever. Uh, uh, and I'm enjoying every second of it. You know, and it's interesting, you know, organizations like the National Alliance of Youth Sports, I've got their uh, uh, CEO on next week, John Ang, he's been on numerous times before. They're celebrating the 40th year of, of uh, educating coaches. You mm-hmm. know, talk districts and whatever. Again, all of these things that everybody knows what a challenge. You know, I had a referee on, Joe, on the sports doctor a few months ago, and an uh, older guy, he said, we can't find any referees or umpires because of nope. the abuse on the sidelines. It's uh, crazy. It, it, it is. And with this tremendous understanding, uh, again, this is why I'm very excited about the documentary. We need all the help we can get. Uh, and emphasizing what we're doing right and trying to stay away from these pressure cookers. That's, and the more talented your son or daughter is, regardless of the sport, the more the pressure cooker, whether it's financially to try to keep up with traveling teams and club teams, or whether it is uh, the uh, pressure with the scholarship world and, and some of these other things. And um, you've got a couple of talented kids. So you see what these, these, some of these expectations that sometimes everybody's putting on them, um, including yourself when you're the coach. It is. Luckily, I don't coach either one of them anymore. So that's <laughs> you know, I knew you learned. That's, right? <laughs> uh, of course, no, that's, uh, you know, my son after a while, he was like, you know, daddy, I think that's good enough. <laughs> and right. that was, but that was the right thing because that allowed me to step back and just enjoy uh, watching him play, which has been a riot for me because now I get to be just dad. And but yeah. that is so true. I mean, now we are in uh, spring break right now over here, and it's amazing to me. Like I've been bombarded with calls, like, "Oh, you know, we have an extra session. Why don't you send them? Or we have an extra practice. Why don't you send them?" And I'm like, "No, it's spring break. We're done." Yes, You're big taking time. the week yes. off. The the rest and recovery is still the semi new frontier. When it comes to youth sports, the idea, especially when we're dealing in soccer, I, you know, I, I have a chapter in my book, Hashtag A Sports Fans, called The Prodigy Sports. You're familiar yep. with that, where we talk about think gymnastics, think my world, figure skating, where we have, yep. uh, and, and tennis and soccer, where you have a 10, 11, 12 year old, this is all they want to do. Now, every doctor, every therapist, we keep on screaming, we want kids to play lots of sports, use different parts of the body experience different things mentally and physically, and that's great unless your daughter's a gymnast or your son's a soccer player where we see, uh, and we need to be paying attention to this um, early specialization and what we call uh, repetitive motion injuries. You know, think of someone swinging a tennis racket a thousand times a week uh, and the idea, or throwing a baseball every day, overdoing it, and then running into these problems of of overuse. So, um, this is why I was so excited about attaching myself semi at the hip with the documentary was the whole idea of doing the two things everybody cares about, whether you're a parent, a sports parent, or a coach. We want to prevent injuries and stay out of trouble. And That's, we want to uh... yeah, we really want to do the best we can. You know, another chapter in the book, Joel, is youth sports and drugs. Well, I have so many kids who survive on ibuprofen every day. Dr. Wild, don't you understand? His ankle's hurt, and he's going to get cut from the team. He's 13 years old, and we need Advil every day, et cetera, et cetera. So Too many talk- people like that. Yes, and we and- understand it, and we need to pay attention and uh, uh, be able to do the three things 
that we stress all the time on the sports doctor and topics like our world, youth sports. And number one is awareness. What's the reality of what's going on? And you know that number two one is of the- education. And uh, to be able to educate these parents and these coaches and these refs and everybody involved, number three is positive action, making some changes. Um, how have you found uh, the, the youth sports and the, the, uh, the doctors and some of the coaches that you've worked with, the schools? How's the feedback been, Joe, as you've been working this project now for a good few years? That's a very interesting <laughs> question because some are incredibly supportive and they completely understand what we're doing. Some, unfortunately, they want nothing to do with it. They are like, nope, that's the way I coach and that's the way it's going to be. That's the yeah, way I... Night. I'm going to throw a chair across the, yep. the court, you know, whether you and like it or not. It, and that's it's sometimes beyond I me. bang my head against the wall when we understand on the one hand Boy, we've made such great progress. But when I talk to people who are in the middle of it, like you, uh, then uh, one of the realities is, boy, you know, we're still treading water in so many different areas, and we need to repeat these things ad infinitum uh, so that we can uh, save some of this uh, 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 epidemic of some of these overuse injuries because of this, like you said with your son, there's another session uh, let's say, you know, we got a young hockey team. Let's play a triple header on the weekend. What are you crazy? Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what I see a lot of these days, which it's just as bad. It, I see kids who are full time committed to a traveling soccer team. They're fully committed to a basketball team and they're fully committed to a football team. And I'm yes. all at the same time. And yes. Now we we all, we're all begging fans. for injuries. We're all we're all fans of a letter sweater that has all those letters on the sweater, but we just don't want to be, uh, you know, dealing with so much uh, uh, of the uh, problems that contribute to all of these things. You know, we're talking with Joe Franco. We're catching up with the tremendous progress of the upcoming documentary where our children play, and we want to come right back. We want to talk about some of his collaboration with my guest. Matter of fact, come on, Shailene, who's doing some sports medicine stuff with them. We'll be right back. Sports Doctor. You know, Joel, I wanted to ask you about, uh, you know, last week we had on as a guest, Shailene Miller. Uh, who's been working with you and looking to um, make uh, uh, different types of services available uh, for uh, some of the different coaches and parents. Talk a little bit about uh, what she's been doing with you with your collaboration. Yeah, we've been, uh, we set up a nonprofit organization called, you know, based off of the name of the movie too, Where Our Children Play, um, WOCP for short. And uh, one of the things that, we always saw that there was a problem was these insane costs for training, conditioning, nutritional information out there. A lot of that, you know, is uh, confusing to people. So what we really wanted to do was to create a program for parents and most importantly for children where they can follow a individual regiment uh, according to their sport. Um, where they get to develop their athletic skills, but also their how they move and how they eat. Um, and by having a coach like Shalane uh, working with them individually, uh, bo- virtually at the well, moment. Her background, all right, a background kinesiology, which is, you know, the whole science of movement, precision, efficiency, all of these things exactly. again, that we've been talking about on the sports doctor for decades um, when we're dealing with the biomechanics, you know, is, is your son or daughter in the best shoe? Uh, are they strengthening their feet and ankles? Are they working on balance? How's their nutrition? Exactly. You know, what a, what's their relationship with their coach or their parents? This yep. is our, our friends at iSport360, Ian Goldberg, you know, their app, uh, in order to uh, enhance the communication, you know, between coaches and parents. You know, youth sports, is, oh, it's always been a big challenge where parents would feel left out or they can't communicate, you know, why isn't my son or daughter getting more time or whatever the challenges happen to be. 
uh, and have some sort of portal to have that type of um, uh, communication and putting together some expertise so that yep. um, young boy and, and girl to really it. to really show them what it is that they have to do without telling them what they have to do. Because as we all know, if you tell a kid do a push-up, they're not going to want to do it. But if they understand why they have to do a push-up or why they should well, let eat... let me tell you the secret. Let me tell you the secret, Joe. You know what yeah. you're talking about? Do you want to be a step or two quicker, don't you? Do you want exactly. to be more explosive? Work those feet, man. You know? You but want that's better the thing, balance? right? Exactly. So I think you have the, to tell, you, you have to show them, you have to explain yeah. it to them. You have to, but and I, if we do yeah. that, parents will understand it too. And consequently, yeah, the conversation gets better. Yes. Young athletes, even serious ones, many times talking about preventing injury goes in one ear and out the other. Very Completely. important, but it goes in one ear and out the other. If you're talking about enhancing performance, quicker, stronger, faster, more explosive, better balanced, et cetera, et cetera, then we have their attention. Whether we're talking again about visualization and the mental game, as I call it, or we're talking about following a particular regimen of the physical kind of training, you know, what is the best kind of strengthening and training for a young 12, 13, 14-year-old soccer player? It ain't more running. It's not no. jumping rope and running stairs. They're already running every day. So, and this has always been one of the biggest challenges in the world of figure skating. I have a young 12, 13 year old doing 50, 60 double jumps a week. And on off ice, they're jumping rope and running sprints. And we're wondering why her knees are killing her. So the education again of um, what are some of the best methods of able to, you know, in the communication with these kids, I've always found that coming from that direction, which is, you know, enhancing performance, you want to be a step or two quicker. I haven't had a kid yet who said no. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I'm talking orthotics, and I'm not talking about a brace in your shoes. I'm talking, do you want a better balance or don't you? So, the, you know, these are the things in the interviews that you and I did. We did a few different interviews uh, uh, with the um, – documentary and this was really really some of the different things that i've always continued to stress uh uh and, and the importance of uh, uh paying attention uh to uh uh the communication you know the family relationships we have experts on you know you're talking divorced parents or adopted kids and bullying in school and all of these kinds of things that might be part of uh why this young athlete is struggling or why they're so, you know, uh, resistant. Uh, and, and again, um, the, uh, this is why I got to ask you, how's your sports psychology skills, coach? <laughs> <laughs> that is, I, I get to use that every day. <laughs> yes. Now, how old are your kids? Do you have two, a boy and girl? I have a boy and a girl, yes, 13 okay, and they, 12. Are they both soccer players? They both are. Okay. Do they play other sports? Uh, seriously, no, but yes, they do. They play basketball. They play sometimes gymnastics. That's a just, big but point. But they do it more for, but they yeah. do it for fun. They don't. You just made a big point, which is again, we don't have to be like you said with a leather sweater, having no. a participation on a team or whatever. Uh, but if we want to participate in another sport, which is so beneficial for fun, intramural, etc., that ends up being a real positive. Uh, you know, when we're talking about teammates, and again, we're talking about these repetitive motion problems uh, because of the uh, uh, specialization. Uh, and, uh, you know, these young volleyball plays that we would see at the national, international level, uh, and um, uh, the fact that they were jumping 10,000 times a week. And uh, then we would tell the coach, we don't need these kids running stairs. This is why they're all hurt. Uh, and, and, uh, High school, junior high school, uh, especially, we want them to really get a good education, and I'm sure they will with the documentary. What's the timing you're thinking about, Joel, just in general, that you're hoping uh, that uh, this is going to be available? Well, we're editing right now, so depending how fast we can uh, finish that process, hopefully by summer. Wow. How long have you been involved with Chesapeake Films? Since 
it's uh, it's been a while <laughs> uh, since uh, what fifteen years, sixteen years. And you, so, is documentary something that you do? What are some of the other areas Chesapeake Films pays attention to in your world? Well, yes, that's actually our third uh, documentary, and uh, but we're also um, in the process of uh, uh, putting together two other projects, uh, one on the Holocaust, actually, and one on a one of the most famous and un, un, one of the most unknown famous bluesmen in the history of America, Josh White. Yeah. Wow. Ah, yeah, to mm-hmm. say, we're going to have to follow up on some of those stories. The time always flies when we're talking with Joel Franco as we get closer and closer to the launch. So, Joel, we're going to get you back. We're going to keep on top of you for this thing, getting ready to come out. And uh, Thank we you. look forward to it and uh, continued success. And lighten up with your kids. Thanks, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Doctor. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. It is the Sports Doctors In segment where we preview some upcoming guests. We add a little Bob Guy to wisdom, answer a few emails, uh, talk about some of the topic, give or take, in hashtag Hey Sports Parents. Speaking of youth sports, we've got one of the champions, John Eng, is the CEO uh, of the National Alliance of Youth Sports. He's returning. They celebrated their 40th year of educating coaches in park districts, in the military. Tremendous uh, organization. He'll be joining us the following week, again, in the world of youth sports. We're going to have Reed Malpey. Reed has been involved in the world of youth sports. He's a speaker. He's an author. Um, He participated in the documentary, Where Our Children Play. He'll be joining me. And then my co-author of the book, Sharky Zartman the former um, Hall of Fame national team member in uh, beach and women's volleyball. She's a prolific author. I participated in a couple of her books, and she uh, was the um, real driving force with hashtag a sports parents. We just had her hubby um, pat on uh, last week, and he talked a little bit about what it was like coaching her, mentoring her, and uh, his, his work, uh, Bob Guida, um, you know, Bob really, really spoke so much about a proper warm up. Uh, he designated DROM dynamic range of motion. It wasn't stretching. It was using the antagonist and positive motions. Imagine you're lifting your leg in front of you because your quadricep is lifting it going as high as you can, and you're not stretching it further from that. Different parts of the body. There's a principle called reciprocal inhibition, which is when you um, tense a muscle, when you contract the muscle, you relax its opposite. Imagine making a muscle with your bicep. When you do that, you are relaxing the tricep muscle. And it was a much more efficient way of warming up without overstretching or over-irritating an, an area when Bob in the late 70s, early 80s was really talking about was there safer ways to stretch? Was there more important, proper ways to warm up? And the dynamic range of motion absolutely uh, uh, was one of them. You know, some of Bob's disciples, he's had quite a few, the late, great John Abdo. Uh, locally in the Chicago area, Dave Buchanan. I'm picturing um, him taking a a picture of John McEnroe balancing on a mini trampoline. Mike Andrews worked with the Chicago White Sox. Mike, uh, working with seniors uh, now, 
and uh, uh, all the work with figure skaters we did over decades. Uh, Melissa Orth, Missy Orth, the great gymnast uh, who we put in orthotics when she was a teenager. She's now one of the leading sports, physical and golf um, coaches. And uh, Steve Liebernick, I think he's out there in Arizona. So many disciples in many of Guida's principles um, that they uh, keep his great, great work alive. Some uh, emails, Angela says, would you please talk a little bit about the sand dune stepper? You know, Angela, the sand dune stepper, and if people go to Instagram, they can see all about it. Uh, created by Matt Dahl. We've had him on numerous times. They were a sponsor of ours for a while. Simulates beach sand resistance. Imagine yourself walking, running, jumping on the sand, like we just talked about Sharky and beach volleyball. Uh, work those feet. Work all the small muscle groups, the gripping power of the feet. Tremendous piece of equipment uh, that is effective for disability people, post-injury, grandmas, superstars. Not only working balance, but strengthening these areas of the small muscles. We call them the intrinsic muscles of the feet. And uh, terrific to walk on, to warm up on, high performance. Again, working balance. Take a look. Uh, Bob says my 13-year-old daughter is a, uh, plays an awful lot of soccer. I'm curious uh, why this uh, anterior cruciate ligament, the serious knee injury, has always been four or five to one girls to boys. Bob, you're right. Uh, and there's a couple of different reasons. One's uh, uh, anatomical mechanical young girls as they go through puberty their hips widen and there's an increased what's called the q angle which is the angle of the femur long bone of the leg to the knee which sometimes increases torque especially with pronated feet or hyper flat type feet and we would so the mechanical connection again has to do with that the wider hips increased knee angle excessive torque uh, to the knee. The other one's hormonal. Uh, as a young girl, woman goes through puberty and the hormones allow the flexibility. This is why a woman can uh, bear a child later on in life. The whole body has that kind of flexibility to go through childbirth. And this change sometimes uh, can cause excessive flexibility or hypermobility with some of uh, these different areas. Uh, there are many, many programs now which pay very, very big attention um, to trying to prevent uh, these kinds of uh, uh, problems with that anterior cruciate ligament. Uh, it's famous in all the different major sports as being one of the um, uh, real challenges uh, with knee injuries. There's nowhere near enough attention to foot mechanics in these young girls. I can't tell you as a sports podiatrist how many times I see these young girls and it's their knees are bothering them, whether they're jumping, they're running, they're moving. Uh, and the fact that they have excessive torque, orthotics make a tremendous difference. And one of the problems is, is the feet don't hurt. This is not brought many times to the attention of the uh, general care, primary care, and or a physical therapist. If you have a young daughter, I don't care what her sport is, include podiatry, sports podiatry, does your, your, your daughter have high arches? Does she have hyperpronated or flat feet, or pronated feet? Common, common, common. Well, speaking of Sharky, who will be on a couple of weeks. One minute. Um, and she talks a lot in, in her um, Sports Parenting 101, in the book, hashtag, hey, sports parents. More important now than ever. It's available on Amazon. Amazon. Ingram Press, some teams, organizations want to buy in bulk. And they could find that uh, there. Uh, Sharky talks so an awful lot. There's great cartoons in the book, too. But she really makes a big deal out of education for parents, all aspects of coaching and uh, uh, competition and what level your kid might be in, in, involved in. And then we talk about uh, prevention of injuries. We have additional experts contributing uh, from sports psychology to physical training to nutrition. Hashtag a sports parent. Catch everybody next week, everybody. Thank you.